Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. I live in Tucson, and my husband and I recently bought this house, and I finally get to have uh, large gardens and try out some stuff in the yard that I've always wanted to. Um, so in the coming months and years, I'm gonna invest in rain harvest, uh, rainwater harvesting equipment, permaculture design, although I'm sort of finding my way to that organically and not in um, probably a traditional sense. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a complete novice. So I'm totally here to learn. Um, but one of the problems I was having is I couldn't really find any Tucson specific content. Um, some really great channels out there. Um, but I, I sort of got to thinking that maybe there's other folks looking for similar content that I was and maybe I should just make some. So I'm kind of learning as I go and trying a lot of new things, but I'm having some pretty good success. This garden up here, I uh, got a seed subscription from my adult son and so I planted out uh, a few different crops now. I've done lettuces and chard and beets and some bush beans and um, kale and cauliflower and um, calabrese broccoli. So now it's green onions, peanuts, um, spaghetti squash, uh, pinto beans, and peaches and cream corn. So that's what's growing up there. It's doing pretty good so far. Um, back here I have a navel orange tree that was here when we bought the property. It's finally starting to look a lot better. Um, as soon as I added mulch it started improving. Um, but I found out I do need to pull it away from the trunk of the tree. I, did, I didn't know that. Um, but I do now. It looks like there's a bunch of mulch on the trunk of this one, but there's none. It's carved out under there, and that's just a light cover of dead grass that's elevated off the um, soil, well elevated. Uh, but that tree has grown about six inches since my husband and I planted it. That was our first ever fruit tree. Down here I have things like a Carolina Reaper, Chocolate Maruga Scorpion, um, Brazilian Starfish, uh, monkey face yellow, um, ahi limon, red savinas, uh, red ricottos, devil's ribs. Um, this big, big girl right here is an ahi dulce. Um, there's a yellow maruga in here, a mini boot jalokia, and some of these are really stunning plants. Um, these are all. Uh, Chiltepines or tepins. Um, I think these are more of a Texas variety. I do have some Arizona native varieties, um, but they're up on the porch. Uh, but just look at this. Let me see if I can get that. It's huge. Some of these leaves are just enormous. But these plants are really, really doing well. Um, I also. Um, as soon as I could start putting down a ton of mulch here, I started to plant um, the beginning canopy layer of my food forest, which is moringa trees. I'm going to do this back area, kind of a perennial food forest. Eventually, I'd like for these to be all ground planted, but they do require a certain amount of shade. So I have them on the north side of a hedgerow here and then under 40% shade. Um, they probably could do without quite as much shade from the bigger trees now, but um, it was crucial to them surviving at first. Um, this is my littlest moringa tree. It's struggling, but it's finally putting on a brave face and gaining some height. Um, the rest of them are over two feet tall, many of them at least getting close to three feet. But I have some over here that are well over three feet tall. They're just spectacular. Um, hopefully they'll be above the wall and throw in good shade by fall. This is a um, annual pepper patch up here. And this is a 224 square foot plot I overplanted with cantaloupe and sugar baby watermelons. 
I guess I sort of thought small melon, small vine, but that was not at all the case. And I have a picture of this same plot on July 5th, and it is, I think, the 20th now. And the vines were just starting to crawl on the fence. And now they're so thick, they're threatening to just, not just pull it out, but to actually collapse it accordion style because of the weight of all the melons. <laughs> I counted 44 melons in there the other day. It's pretty crazy. But it's not alone in its abundance. Inside of this is just nothing but peppers. They're just everywhere. This is a Peter Pepper. This was supposed to be a Peter Pepper, but it's a Peter Pepper hybrid. It is also just absolutely covered. This is a Fresno or Fresno hybrid. I don't really know because they came from grocery stores. I think this one's more of a real Fresno, but I think all of them could be hybridized um, because again, they came from commercially grown crops. Um, the back row were all Pekings or peking like but as you can see and unless they do this too i think these are hybrids these are a little longer than most pekings and they are downward facing whereas this plant has a lot of fur on the leaves and stems and has tiny uprights and i have a couple of these and they all have upright peppers the rest of them have little pendulous peppers and some are longer than others let me see if i can get you in there There are a bunch of really little, they're like smaller than a pinky for sure, but they're, I don't know, maybe they're pretty small. I have some really cool little ahi charapitas and some kumari pollux. Um, I, I really like the wild type peppers and they make a lot of salsa. We have a little grill set up here, and I do char the peppers um, on mesquite wood right there. Up here, I have, um, I did have a barbecue. Um, the watermelons are eating it alive. Um, these are some flowers that uh, self-seeded from plants that were here before, or bulbs. Um, some roses that I thought were dead, um, but are loving life now, and a bunch of, oh man, trash, a bunch of tomatillos, most of which were self-seeded, some I planted myself, but most of the volunteers are out competing the sown varieties. These are a hybrid or um, actually just the um, Green Rio Grande or whatever. I don't know. I can't remember what they're called. But uh, they're definitely growing well. And all of it was, I think, just starting with wood mulch and learning about the types of soil that we have here and the limitations. Um, but over the next weeks, months, and years, I'm going to invest in some rainwater harvesting, uh, build some pretty large composting systems, start bringing in a lot of um, animal manures in various states of compost, and um, start really making a lot of soil and um, working on aquaponics. And, you know, like I said, I'm a total novice, so I'm here to learn, and I'd like to share what I do learn and the successes and failures as I go, and hopefully you'll want to come along for that journey. Um, anyway, thank you so much. If you've listened to this whole rambling video, I have no idea what I'm doing. There is no savvy YouTuber behind these videos, and I doubt I will ever gain those kind of skills. But I do want to share what I have, and hopefully you want to see what I have. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully you'll join me for another one in the future.